Freddy, you ready? I know you're ready. If you're ready, aren't you? You better get ready. <laughs> Welcome back guys, welcome to the OSA. We're downstairs in the saltwater apartment. Allie's over here in the new freezer courtesy of Jeff. Chris is upset about it, but it's okay. We got a brand new freezer, it's ginormous. So we're getting all of our frozen foods back that we normally carry that you guys have been asking for forever. And Allie's coming around over here. She's got some stuff defrost. Delicious. And we're gonna be feeding the big tank. So following us on over this way, uh, we wanna specifically talk about feeding puffers today how their diet varies from other fish we have at the shop. So let's go. Who's hungry and fishy fishing over here? I think Fred is hungry. Oh, there we go. You ready? Done, done, done. Okay. Done, done. All right, so today, we today are, we are feeding fat Fred. Yes. So today we're going to film a little video on feeding puffers. As you guys know, if you've been to the shop, uh, we have a ginormous puffer. Allie, what kind of oh, puffer is this? He's oh, he's impatient. he's getting he's getting <laughs> so, excited. He's doing this little fat swimming Fred can. is a white spotted puffer. He's approximately what we think about six years old. He was um, the previous owner had him about four years, and he was already pretty good size when he got him. So he's a big guy, and right now he's kind of like the talk of the fish room. He's super awesome. He's ginormous, and he lets himself be known by splashing water on guests and all sorts of <laughs> things. So, um, so right now I'm gonna feed him. This is his favorite time of day, and he, as soon as he sees the food, he gets really impatient. Um, I feed him with tongs, of course. Uh, definitely wouldn't hand feed him. He's got a really sharp beak. So they have a beak instead of teeth, and it could really take off a finger if he you thought your finger was food. So um, I use these, and I'm right now. This is just silver sides and krill as like a supplemental thing. Um, we'll go in here. All right, he's already waiting. He already knows what's coming. Well, the other fish tried to steal it, but he gets it. <laughs> and so now you're also supplementing the diet with silver sides too. Yep, right? yeah, so we do some silver diet. sides too. We do some krill, um, sometimes shrimp too. So a big varied diet for any of your fish is really important. If you just feed brine shrimp, which we hear a lot, brine shrimp has almost no nutritional value whatsoever. So it's more like a treat. You can add it. So we do brine and we do spirulina brine, which is enriched. Uh, but also we mainly focus on mice shrimp for the smaller fish. And then for the big guys, we do, like I said, krill, silver sides. Um, clams on a half shell, snails. Stuff like that. Awesome, Jeff. What'd you think of that? He's pretty cool, it's pretty, right? Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Fred's my boy. Yeah. <laughs> he likes to splash in the morning. He likes to splash in the morning. Look at him, Allie. Give him the, give him a little, uh, little tummy rub. <laughs> Woo! What's up, dude? Yeah. Um. So we also here at the OSA, we also like to add Selco Boost in there, which is made by Fritz. Uh, so that has a, it has amino acids, it has actually some garlic in there which helps get their appetite going. So it's really good for newer fish, for you and for here. Uh, and uh, it just helps enrich their food and it helps them have a healthier diet. Okay, so Ali just gave Fred some silver size and krill, correct? Yes, Okay, correct. so for those of you that don't know, puffers, they have teeth. They get their two like front teeth and bottom teeth and as they grow older they like fuse together and it like becomes like a beak. So, Ali, how do we take care of that problem? So uh, over time, if, if it's not taken care of and if puffers are only fed a soft food diet, like just silver sides, just um, shrimp or just krill, eventually the beak will just keep growing. Their, their beak grows consistently and normally they shave it down in the wild. They're eating uh, clams and they're eating snails and they're eating all sorts of stuff with a hard shell and that's going to keep that beak trimmed down. But without that in captivity, eventually it can get really overgrown and they can cause a lot of issues. They're not able to eat. Um, it's really painful for them. So we want to feed them clams on a half shell. That will kind of get that beak trimmed down. Awesome. So like it's not like humans when their baby teeth fall out, they just keep growing. Yeah, right. right. Okay. So it's like similar to rodent teeth. So like rodents, for example, their teeth never stop. It's so the like same hamsters? way with these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. So we're defrosting some clams. We're going to give them a couple of clams to show you guys. Clams have been uh, defrosted. They're ready to go. <laughs> All right. Fred is going to get his uh, his clam. Uh, this is the second one today because I didn't hit the record button. But we're gonna send it over to Allie and we're gonna be quiet and see if we can hear Fred uh, crunching this. And this, this is clam. why we use tongs. You'll yes. hear. Oh, he didn't even crush that. 
the trigger. Alright. Oh, the oh. trigger ticket. Oh. So I guess triggers can do the same thing, huh? Triggers can do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> They've got teeth instead of a beak. So <laughs> they definitely can pack a punch too. <laughs> awesome. That's why I use those tongs, or yes. else they'd be eating alley fingers instead. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Jeff, where'd you go? Jeff? Oh, Jeff? Jeff? Jeffrey? Allie, have you seen Jeff? We gotta find Jeff. He's missing. Jeff is Jeff is missing. Jeff, I found you. I found you. Keep on reefing, baby. <laughs>